In this lesson, we'll learn about the basic functionality of Photoshop layers. All right, so I still have the file open on my screen here that we left off with in the previous lesson. It's just simply an empty document. Now, before we open another file here, I want to go ahead and show you the Layers panel. This document only has the one layer. Remember, when we created this document, we told it we wanted a background color of white. So what Photoshop's given us here is a locked background layer uh, with a fill color of white. So this layer is full of white pixels. I'm going to go ahead and open up another file right now. Let's come over here to File Open. And notice that the keyboard shortcut for that is Control O. And we'll browse to the project file creature.psd. Select it and hit open. And we have that open up on our screen here. Now, notice here it opens up in a separate tab here along the top. We still have that previous document open, but we now have this creature.psd file open. All right, so really quickly, I want to teach you a couple of handy navigation-related keyboard shortcuts here so we can really move in and around this document. Now, in, a previ in the previous lesson, we zoomed in, or zoomed out, rather, using the Control minus sign, and you can see that that zooms out. We can also use Control plus sign to zoom in, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Control and Space Bar to activate the Magnifying Glass tool. Magnifying Glass tool is right over here in your tool panel, but holding down Control and Space Bar uses a modifier key to access that tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to the right here. You can see that we're zooming in on our creature. Now I zoomed in really, really far, so if I wanted to zoom out, I can just simply click and drag the other direction here. Now, I'm able to do this because I'm using what's known as the Photoshop Animated Zoom. And uh, if we come up here to our Edit drop-down and Preferences, you may not have to, that turned on. So we're going to show you where the setting for that is. It's under General. And you can see here that the Animated Zoom box is checked here. So if you don't have that checked, check it and you'll be able to zoom in and out just like I am. Let's go ahead and cancel that for right now. So we've zoomed in really closely on sort of his eye here. Now, what if we wanted to move around to another portion of the canvas? We could simply hold down the space bar and notice that our keyboard, um, or excuse me, our mouse cursor rather, changes again. Now we have a little hand. Now with a hand, we can click on our canvas and just drag, and we can navigate around our canvas. That you know, obviously it's zoomed in way too far to fit the entire uh, creature on our screen here. So we're able to move around our canvas just by holding the space bar and clicking. Now, looking over here at the layers panel, notice here that this creature has three different layers, or this file rather has three different layers in it. We have a white background layer similar to the previous file. We have another background layer here that I've created, and it actually has this blue and black pixel colored data on, on, on that particular layer. Then we have this creature layer and it has the uh, pixels that are colored to make up the creature on it. So we can actually hide each one of these layers if we wanted to look at them individually. We could hide by clicking the eyeball next to each layer. So if we wanted to hide the creature, you can kind of see just that background colored layer. If we wanted to hide them both, you could click on the eyeball next to both. So uh, let's go ahead and bring the creature back here and you can see him without his background. And we can bring the background back again just by clicking where that eyeball was. Now let's talk about for just a moment how we can create additional layers within this document. Now the layers panel, uh, again, is adjustable. We can grab the corner and click and drag and resize that panel. But there's a series of buttons down here at the bottom of this panel. Now there is a button right here next to the trash can. It looks like a little piece of paper with the corner folded. This is going to be your new layer button. So if I go ahead and click on that button there, notice that we add a layer above the layer that we had selected. The layer selected is colored orange. So if we go ahead and select that background layer and hit that new layer button again, it adds layer 2 right over the background. Now notice that these layers were created without really relevant names. We could simply, uh, to rename these layers, we could simply just double click on the layer name and you can see that we could uh, new rename that to whatever we want. Let's just call that new layer. Just like so. Or if we wanted to do that as we're creating a layer, we could just hold down the Alt key and click on that new layer button. It's going to give us the new layer options dialog box here. And uh, let's just call this another layer. And notice here there's some other things. We can change the color of the layer. Now it's not going to affect the pixels on the layer. It's just going to affect the uh, how that layer is presented to us in the layers panel here. So let's go ahead and change this to orange. We've got a blend mode setting. We'll talk more about those in just a moment. And we've got an opacity setting. And again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and hit OK. 
and notice we've created another layer here, and it's colored orange. And if I shift my selection over here to another layer, you can see that it's just the area around the eyeball that gets colored orange. Now, we can select multiple layers here uh, if we want to, just by holding down the control key. So let's go ahead and hold down the control key and click on new layer, and then layer one here. Now, that's uh, selecting discontinuous layers. If we wanted to select a range that are all right next to each other, let's go ahead and hold down the new layer, and say we want to select all three of these layers, we can do that by holding down the shift key and clicking that next layer, and you can see that it selects all those consecutive layers there. So, let's go ahead and delete these layers. I don't actually want to keep these, so I'm just simply going to click and drag these down to the trash can down here, and drop them, and you can see that they get taken out of the layers panel. All right, now we looked at a couple of modifier keys for creating new layers um, by either just clicking on the new layer button or alt-clicking it to get that new layer uh, options dialog. Uh, now we can also create a new layer underneath the selected layer by holding down the control key and clicking that new layer button. And you can see here that it appears uh, right there underneath the background layer. So let's go ahead and delete that here because another thing I want to talk to you about is groups of layers because this layer panel is much like a file structure within Photoshop here. We can organize these and a Photoshop file can have literally hundreds of layers and uh, how are we going to ever find anything that we need if there's hundreds of layers in here if there's not some kind of organized manner of keeping track of our layers. So uh, in the layers panel we have layer groups and it's this little folder right down here next to the new layer button. If I go ahead and click on that, just like creating a new layer, it creates a new group. And notice here there's a little blue arrow next to it, and we can click and twirl that arrow to the right or down, but nothing happens. That's because there's nothing in that group. Now, to place layers into that group, all we need to do is click and drag and drop it on top of that group here. And notice that that background layer gets indented just a little bit. Uh, we can twirl that arrow now and hide all the contents of that group here. So if I wanted to create yet another new group here, similar to the new layer button, we could also hold down the alt button to get the new group options here, or we could name our group, uh, again assign a color to it, or a blend mode, or, or even an opacity. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that for right now, and I want to show you one modifier key that works just a little differently. Remember when we created a new layer by holding down the control key and clicking the new layer button, it created a new layer underneath the selected layer. Uh, now if we do that with the new group button here, let me go ahead and do that. Notice what happens. It actually creates a new group within group one, just like so. Uh, it is sort of underneath it, but if we twirl that arrow, you can see that that group is clearly inside of group one here. So groups can contain both layers and other groups. Now let me go ahead and drag this back out of that group. We'll just drag it back and highlight that little space between the layer and the group in blue. We'll drop it right there, and let's go ahead and delete that group. Because there's another way we can create groups that is, in my opinion, much more efficient. And if we just hold down control and select both these layers, we can hit the keyboard shortcut control G, and that will group all of the selected layers. So you can see they've been placed into that group one folder. All right, great. So uh, before we move on and look a little bit more around this dialog, let's go ahead and show you one other thing, and that's how can we duplicate a, either a layer or a group. And that's really simple. Let me just select this background here. All I need to do to duplicate that background is drag it down to the new layer button. You can see that we get a background copy here. Now I want to delete that because we can also hold down our Alt key and just drag a copy of that layer, just like so. It's just that easy to make a copy of all the pixels that are on one of your layers. Now I'm going to again delete that here because I want to show you that this also works with groups of layers. So if I drag that down to the Let's drop it on that new layer button. You can see here that we create a group one copy on top of group one. Now let's go ahead and delete that group here and let's see what happens if we take our group and we drag it instead of dropping it on the new layer button, we drop it on the new group button. What has happened? We basically just took group one and we placed it inside yet another group here. So we've created a new group, but we have basically included everything that was in group one inside this new group here. So um, let's go ahead and drag that back out here and let's delete group two. All right. 
Now, there are a variety of other settings here around both the top and the bottom of this layers panel, as well as there's a fairly extensive submenu for the layers panel. Now, we're going to actually be talking about several of these things in upcoming lessons as we get to them while we're painting. But uh, let's just briefly run through these. You can see here we have a pass through layer here, uh, or a pass through drop down. Let's go and drop that down, and we have several options here. These are referred to as blend modes. Now, the, each one of these is going to do something a little different, and uh, each one of those, uh, we're not going to have time to touch on each one of those in this course, but we will be using a few of those. Uh, to the right of that, we have our layer opacity, and you can see here that we can change that for both a group or a layer. Now, if we click that little arrow, you can see that we can drag the slider down for that creature layer, making him, let's drag it to about 50% here. And you can see that we have made it 50% transparent uh, because we adjusted the layer's opacity here. So we can see that blue and black background layer through the creature just a little bit. All right, now let me go and bump that back up here. Now, this next row with these lock buttons and this fill percentage, we're actually going to be talking about those in an upcoming lesson. So let's bounce down here. Now we have here a link layer button, and I can be honest with you, I very rarely link layers together. So uh, we probably won't be talking about that. But we also have here uh, a layer effects or layer style rather button and you can click that and you can see a lot of different layer styles we may be looking at that in a later lesson but we also have a new layer mask button here as well we'll probably be getting into that more towards the end of this course but you can see here there's a lot of different options here inside the layers panel now what does that mean for digital painting well obviously we could paint everything in our composition onto our background layer. But that's not very efficient because if we wanted to make changes to just one part, it would be much easier if we had our composition separated onto different layers. Maybe we wanted to change the color of just this background data and leave our creature alone. That'd be a really logical place to separate those two. Now, the visibility of the elements in our composition here is directly impacted by their order in the layer stack. Right now, the creature is on top, but if we click and drag the creature underneath the background layer, notice that he disappears because the background is actually filled in where the creature is. So, uh, your visibility of your layers will be directly impacted by the stacking order here inside the layers panel. Now, feel free between lessons to experiment with some of these different buttons and things in the layers panel. When you come back in the next lesson, we're going to look at sort of an overview of some of the most commonly used tools for digital painting here in Photoshop.